Welcome back, everybody. If you're new, my name is Nicholas, and this is Investing Against the Grain. All right, so for those of you who are new to the channel, uh, I just got back from Greece. I got married, as you can tell right here. Had a beautiful wedding. Glad to be back in the States, though. We've been traveling nonstop this year to Mexico, Costa Rica, Greece, Spain. So it's nice to be back, but very excited that I'm married now officially. Well, I've been officially married, but ceremony-wise, it was a beautiful occasion. Uh, we'll be putting out a short of, of the wedding itself. Uh, probably in a couple weeks here, uh, we had some stuff done professionally. So we're waiting for that stuff and we'll share all that with all of you. So with that said, uh, we're back here. I'll give one last uh, life update uh, here in my house. Uh, as you all know, I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, so the hurricane, we had to deal with that. And luckily, everything went real smoothly for us. So no big issues. I wasn't too concerned, mainly because our house is all block and we do have all hurricane rated windows. If you guys remember, I used to sit in front of my big 10 foot by 10 foot window in my in my uh, dining room. That's all hurricane rated. So I wasn't too worried about anything like that. I was more so worried about potential leaks and, you know, wind and water. Water likes to find the path of least resistance, like current with electricity. So those are the things I was worried about. Got lucky, had great friends. They took care of our rooftop brought everything in, so everything's good on the home front. All right, with that said, and all the personal life stuff you know, to the side here, and I'll talk more about it in the future with you guys, but there's just way too much to talk about right now, and I have so many thoughts in my head that I'm probably not gonna get everything out. As you guys all know, this stream of consciousness, so I'm probably gonna forget half the stuff I wanna talk about, but that's okay, because we have time. So over the weekend, or on Friday, we had Tesla AI Day. Now, I want to dedicate a special amount of time for that in future videos, especially regarding Dojo. I think there's some very interesting things with Dojo that people people are kind of sleeping on. I think Dojo is a lot bigger of a deal than most people think about or think it is, and it's going to be essentially in use in uh, Q1 of 2023. So I'm excited to talk about that. The, the, the things that they're dealing with and they're solving, whether it's bandwidth, whether it's uh, using some kind of data locality uh, way of understanding what's happening with all the data, the, the way they have all the metadata, there must be a crazy backend, you know, type of database that's controlling all the metadata so they understand what's happening in that distribution, how they're housing the 30 plus ter uh, pe uh, petabytes, excuse me, of storage, where's that sitting, right? There's so much to talk about, there's so much to unpack, but in today's video, we're not gonna talk about any of that. What we're gonna talk about is Tesla stock price. So I know that's a long prelude into getting to this point, but hey, it is what it is. So let's talk about Tesla stock price because today it took a dump. I mean, it was not a pretty day. Today was just, in my opinion, an overreaction, but hey, I'm very invested in Tesla, so you would expect that to be my reaction. Okay, well, let's unpack this a little bit. We got a a 8% drop today, essentially, on the back of maybe AI Day, but mainly, I would say, on the delivery numbers that Tesla reported uh, over the weekend. Now, if you guys recall a couple of videos back, I warned everybody, I said, be humble. Let's not get too cocky here when we see other auto manufacturers have issues because you never know what could happen with Tesla and we don't know what's happening with China. And I was saying, just keep it even keel. Let's let's stay humble. Let's stay classy. And let's at least wait until October 19th. And we could see what Tesla, uh, Elon, Zach, Drew, all of them have to say. Now, with that said, as much as I kind of warned about what could happen, in my opinion, this was not a big deal. It's not a big deal at all. If anything, I think we should be applauding because we finally, finally are going to get to a point where we're no longer looking at deliveries from a quarter to quarter perspective. All right. This is something that I, I think really large, well-run companies, they don't focus on a quarter to quarter uh, t type numbers. I think they think more so in the annual perspective. All right. They want steady state. Now, this, this all presumes that we can believe the things that were told to us by IR and Elon that they're just trying to get away from these end of quarter type pushes and deliveries, right? If we believe them and we take their word for it and they further validate this and expand upon it come earnings on October 19th, then I think this is a very good thing. We've been needing to get to this point. 
Tesla needs to essentially grow up and level up and not be trying to make these hard press uh, pushes toward the end of every year. So with that said, let's talk about what this means. So instead of focusing on end of quarter and making these big pushes, what they're going to do is they're essentially just going to try and keep a steady state of vehicles being delivered, exported, and it doesn't matter where it's at. At least that's my interpretation. And they're not going to worry about just doing domestic in the last month and trying to, you know, really focus on hitting those numbers. Instead, they're just going to try to keep that wheel spinning nonstop and let that wheel slowly grow bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. And instead of us focusing on, oh, how many did they deliver at the end of this quarter, you know, and having these like higher prediction numbers, they're not going to be worried about that. They want to have a steady state, nice linear growth when it comes to their deliveries. Okay, now I know we've seen the charts and it's really exponential, but you get my point. They want to smooth it out. And so another way to think about this is very much how Tesla uh, forecasts their their uh, their year over year growth. Right. Every time you have analysts ask, OK, well, how do you see growth into the next quarter or whatever? And they say the same thing. They say we expect to grow 50 percent year over year for the foreseeable future. And where that type of, of uh, projection answer for analysts, you know, is a very linear and flat and just what to expect. That's what Tesla needs to get to with their deliveries again, so that they're not sitting there trying to give a certain guidance on what it'll be each quarter or what they're trying to hit instead. No, look, this is just what we're going to do. We don't care if it's the last day of the quarter. We don't care if it's the first day of quarter, the middle of the quarter. We just want to have these deliveries going out cars built. We deliver them. And so I think the, the bigger part of this for Tesla is is twofold. One, the obvious on on from an expense perspective, they're not rushing these end of quarter deliveries, paying ex, extra costs for ship uh, shipping, uh, shipping costs. Uh, a lot of these vessels are roll on, roll off carriers. And normally they have a certain speed that they go to certain amount of knots so that they hit a port at a certain time. It allows the shipping company to save on fuel costs by going, you know, essentially 70% of what the engines can do. It allows the ports to be able to regulate when uh, vessels come in and go out instead of them just sitting waiting out in the anchorage, right? So there's, there's a lot of ripple effects to this. But when Tesla tries to, you know, slam on the accelerator for these shipments, what happens is, okay, well, they want these ships to get there earlier. So there's a port cost. So then there's a cost for from the shipping company because now it's going to cost them more fuel. And so, of course, they have a charge on top of that, right? And it just escalates. And then if there's already a line in there, well, how do you get in front of that line to get your deliveries there to get it? I mean, it just goes on and on. So to be able to get away from that, and then, and then on top of that, it's the human capital, okay? At, as these vehicles get delivered, well, humans have to do that right tesla needs their employees to do that well when we're making a big push for the end of the quarter for the end of the quarter and we don't have enough people there to deliver these vehicles and and create a good experience for the customers well that just becomes a bigger problem because now you're taking people out of service you're taking people out from here you're taking people from the c-suite you're taking engineers that should be working on their projects and instead they're here and they're delivering cars now it's a beautiful story and it's nice to see the company just, you know, come together for this one common goal. And it's beautiful, but it's not scalable. It's not something that can last. And it's not it's not good for morale. Right. People want to know what their day to day looks like. They don't want to always have to worry about this end of quarter push. And so by taking away the emphasis for end of quarter deliveries, instead, you put back the emphasis on providing value good customer service, being customer first. And by doing that, everything just snowballs, right? We're doing the right things for the right reasons rather than for end of quarter push. And I think that's the true ethos of Tesla. And that's how they're going to have better customer experiences. So with that said, the stock market took a plunge or well, the stock market, Tesla took a plunge. The stock market actually did really well. I think Nasdaq was up about 2%. Tesla down about 8%. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have this horrible, horrible habit of spending money on Tesla stock. As you guys all know, I'm a very cheap person. I, I judge every expenditure we do. It's just in my nature. It's who I am. But, you know, when it comes to Tesla, I tend to be very 
willing to spend money. So this morning before I started work, you know, I, I get up, as you all know, at 545 in the morning. I just went ahead and I put in a order to buy five shares at uh, uh, $251. Stock market opens. I didn't think much of it. You know, I know we were up and all of a sudden I get an alert on my phone. Oh, the order kicked in. Okay. Then about lunchtime, I'm just sitting there like, all right, whatever. Let's do another 15 shares. So I bought another 15 shares. Now I need to stop eventually. I, I shouldn't do this, right? Because I do need to have some cash set aside for, for different reasons, right? I, I know I'm going to have a tax bill at the end of this year. And there's some other things that we want to do as a family. I should be saving money for that. But unfortunately, Tesla is just too good of a bargain right now. And these prices, I can't afford not to buy. And that's how I look at it. So maybe I'm a fool for it. We'll find out in the long run. Now, I don't think that this is anything to worry about. I know a lot of people are stressed about it. I can see it on Twitter. In my opinion, this is overblown. This is overreaction. Okay, this was probably very much bot driven. This is probably some people who just want to get out, people who are fearful, FUD, etc. Tesla, I do not think have, has, have a demand problem. I don't think there's a demand problem at all. This whole notion about China and the insurance and all that, look, this is where it's going to come down to either there is a problem in China demand-wise or there isn't an Elon Musk and the team are telling us the truth and the reality is they're just trying to switch over their model. Or it could be both. Who knows? Maybe there is a softening of China and they saw this as an opportunity to go ahead and make this transition to smooth out the quarters instead of having these mad pushes at the end of each quarter. We'll find out. Hopefully, we'll find out on the 19th of October. Either way, I think Tesla has more demand than what they can produce right now for the foreseeable future. They definitely have at least a backlog for at least another year. Okay, so I don't think that's an issue. And if there was an issue with demand, especially in China, Tesla has many levers they can pull on. Okay, I don't think the fact that they were offering uh, insurance, you know, essentially giving insurance for free to Chinese customers, I don't think that means they have a demand problem. I think that more so means that they are trying to go ahead and get people to take their vehicles now rather than waiting until for this rumored uh, Tesla price cut that supposedly is going to happen. Chi Tesla China has denied it. And, it's, and just to go along with this whole demand issue as well, if you haven't noticed, the China numbers are back up. All right. As far as how long you have to wait for a vehicle. So the numbers are back up. So I don't think there's an issue there. And on top of that, everybody equates lead times to demand. And I don't think that's a healthy way of thinking about it, especially when you forget about the other part of the equation, which is the fact that they're producing more and more vehicles. So as they produce more vehicles, what we hope those those uh, demand times, those wait lead times come down. Now, just because those lead times come down doesn't mean demand is softened. It just means that they can quickly fill these back orders because they can get more of them out. So I think there's a little bit of a confusion there as far as the demand for Tesla. Now, overall, there's, there's nothing to see here, in my opinion, at least not until October 19th. October 19th, we'll know everything we need to know. Until then, we have some other stuff going on. We got the Twitter news. That's going to come out eventually. We'll see what happens. Seems like Gary Black and um, and Ross Gerber, if you watch them on Farzad uh, with Farzad and uh, Tessa Boomer Mama, seems like they're of the impression that this will not go to trial. I don't know about that. We saw Elon refuse to let Solar City go, and that went to trial, and he came out on top. So we'll see what happens here. But I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past Elon taking this to trial, and I wouldn't I wouldn't place a lot of hopes on this being resolved one way or another, especially if, if that's what you're thinking is going to be the catalyst for Tesla in the short term. Again, remember, this has honestly nothing to do with Tesla. This is a Elon overhang. I understand how one could impact the other, but I don't think that this will be the big driver for us. Now, Q, Q3 uh, earnings, that could be. If we see better gross margins because they're not trying to push uh, crazy deliveries at the end of the quarter, which costs them more money, if we see a higher uh, margins also because of S and X deliveries went up, if we see them beat estimates, right, from an earnings per share perspective, despite the fact that they missed on the deliveries, 
not a big deal. Because at the end of the day, all we really care about is production. Because if they produce them, they will buy them. They will sell them. And Tesla produced over 360,000 vehicles. So not worried about that either. The other big catalyst that we could be looking at in October is a uh, is a uh, credit rating upgrade. So from junk to invest, investor grade. And that could be something that actually you know moves the needle when it comes to Tesla share uh, stock price. But in the bigger scheme of things, I think Tesla stock price is going to move because people are going to realize this is ridiculously cheap. All right. It, it should not be trading at these values. And today's move, honestly, is an overreaction, right? This is 2022. How many times have we seen these overreactions about nothing? All right. What, what's, what's the real issue with Tesla right now? What, what is this 8% behind? Is it an amazing AI day? where we saw the bot, where we saw where Elon said the FSD beta will be ready for worldwide release by the end of this year. And we're in October now. No, I don't think those are the reasons. Is it because Tesla had a record number of deliveries, record of production? So I don't think there's anything really to worry about here. Again, in my opinion, this channel is all about long-term investing. Think about the long-term. Nothing has changed with the company. Demand is strong, execution is strong, and they're the most exciting company in the world right now. There's no other company you would want to sit here and listen to me ramble about. It's only Tesla. Tesla is the difference maker here. Tesla is what Google was. It's what Apple was. Tesla is, the, this is the decade of Tesla in my opinion. All right, we're gonna leave it there for today. Um, I'll have more nuanced discussions with you guys over the next couple of days regarding AI day and some other things as, as everything unfolds with Tesla over the week, we'll see what happens. But I plan on making a video pretty much every day this week. So keep an eye out for those. All right, if you enjoy this type of content, if you found it valuable and you wanna give us a donation, feel free to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, it'll cost you nothing. I love you all, peace.